Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son. Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh, Shah, Ba'ashim Yahweh, And double honor to the apostles of the great known stone that taught me this truth through the inspiration and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh, Shah, which is indeed the Holy Spirit. And as well as giving the salutations they ref towards the Yakim, as forwarding this truth worldwide. Honest to you brothers out there and Shalom to the brothers and the sisters as well that are continually heeding and once again this is your brother Laban coming at you with another video and I'm in this video I'm going to be focusing on the government on how they're preparing for blackouts which can last for up to a week down here in the UK and many other topics you know and I'm Lord willing you know this will exalt you brothers because when we see bad news man it's exalting to the soul because we're expecting the bad that happened first to bring the end of this world for the coming of the new kingdom. So without further ado, let's get right into this. Government tests energy blackouts, emergency plans and supply fair grows. The government has war game the emergency plans to cope with energy blackouts lasting up to seven days in an event of a national power outage. Amid growing fears over security of supply this winter. The Guardian has seen documents marked officials sensitive, which warns that in a reasonable worst case scenario, all the sectors, including transport, food and water supply, communications and energy could be severely disrupted for up to a week. They show that ministers will prioritize getting food, water and shelter to the young and elderly people, as well as those with caring responsibilities. If the country's experience blackouts, with the Met Office warning that Britain faces a higher risk of a cold winter. Whitehall officials are currently stress testing programs. Yarrow the confidential plans for coping in an event of a power outage and have held a series of exercise with government departments and councils across the country. In recent days, the cross government blueprint was first drawn in 2021 before Russia's invasion of Ukraine to improve planning and resilience in an event of a major technical fault on the national grid. It is unrelated to the energy outlooks published by the national grid for this winter. Um, however, concerns over the impact of a blackout have grown as a result of the war um, with government insiders admitting the planning exercise had taken a new urgency as a result of the, the resulting energy crises, which has seen households energy bills spike and i'm going to just leave it at that and saying that um you know when something happens on a grand scale any event we know it doesn't happen at random it's like when we had the c19 um city lockdowns <clears throat> you know we know what that was all about at the very end of the deal and um as well as you're going to have another crisis up and coming and uh it could very well be possibly many crises which can open up the door to a new world which is what they want the great reset and um within that great reset you know the main rudiment which will be the um, motb the implantable device and hopefully these crises will open up the door for that you know we just waiting and seeing lord willing all right but um like i said this is going to be another psychological operation which would be staged on a, on a grand scale um, down here in the UK. And they're saying that there could very well be energy blackouts lasting up to seven days. And they better have prepared because I'm telling you, man, people will go crazy for the simple fact that especially the, um, the, the, the young people today, they can't leave their phones. Certain people can't even leave the computer. Okay. So just imagine if they can't use it for a week, they can't even charge their computer up or their laptop or their phones. You know how many people sleep with their phones on? They got one eye closed and one eye open playing with their phone all day. All right. So when people don't get their their um their dopamine effect <laughs> from their um their gadgets, man, because they can't use them up for a week. What do you think is going to happen? People are going to bug the hell out out here, man. So they better have prepared for what's for what's going to happen as what as well as they're going to stage anyway. All right. So 
this is the thing, man. It's going to get down to the nitty gritty. It's going to get real out here. And um, it's no longer going to be fun and jokes anymore. Because everything that we've been saying is now going to start happening. Or should I say it's happening right now. It's just everything's get, getting itself together. So I want to read something else. Where you have power companies are gearing up for winter blackouts. In nearly 40 years as a shopkeeper, James Daunt has um, had to deal with power cuts many times. Sometimes there's a flood of a huge JCP digger um, has gone through your power supply, say the founders of Daunt's books. And managing director of Waterstones, you might run the power from the guy next door. Sometimes you're literally going around with a torch collecting books for customers in the gloom. But this winter could present a very different challenge. If gas supplies run too low, the government has crises plans for a series of rolling three hour cut, excuse me, three hour power cuts with regions of the UK taking it in turn to go dark this week. The Guardian reveals that officials have also dusted down programs, Yara, which would kick in if there were a complete nationwide blackout. It involves prioritizing food, water, and shelter for the young and for the older people to examine how to communicate with the public. Um, only hospitals, oil refineries, and certain other critical services would be protected. Okay, yeah, and, 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 and they're they going to have to do that. Because when you shut off the grid, you're also shutting off transportation. You're, you're shutting off basically the economy. The economy is out. So again, you know, this is a part of their agenda is to, to damage severely the economy as well as they did with the whole, you know what, situation, the Crown Royale situation. Okay. Auto Abkeo, which is an important model to the 33rd degree. Go check it out. It's on Google. Google tells you the truth on that. Okay. So. And this is very important to us because we want to see this happen. We want to see the end of this world. This is this is this is what we need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this is what we need to see happen so that we can receive the coming kingdom and as well as Yahweh Shah can come back to bring that kingdom for us. You know, that's something that we feed off of, man. So yeah, let's let's go, Esau. Do what you gotta do. All right. Now I want to read something else as well on um on what this guy is saying, I forgot the guy's name, man. But anyway, he's well versed in the um the financial world. You know, he knows what's getting ready to go down when it comes. And this is what he says: the world could face the world's fi the worst financial crisis since World War II, as hyperinflation looms. Hedge funds says. Oh, don't wait there. Yeah. So anyway. Hyperinflation could spur the most significant financial crisis since World War II, according to the letter to investors from Elliott Management. Um, the letter sent a stock warning to clients that as the era of cheap borrowing ends, investors will find it increasingly difficult to turn a profit amid an extremely challenging microeconomic environment. The Financial Times first reported the content um, and investors should not assume that they have seen everything just because they have navigated through the previous bouts of financial distress like the 08 subprime mortgage crises. 2022 has already been a dismal year for markets with global equity seeing a loss of $28 trillion, $28 trillion according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Elliott largely blamed central banks for the worst thing financial picture and added that most have been dishonest towards the true corporate of record high inflation and have in instead attributed prices pressures to supply chains <laughs> disruptions as opposed to loose monetary policy and yeah because again the central bankers are behind the up and coming hyperinflation and as well as they're involved in the, 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 the today's problem that we're dealing with, which is inflation. Now, I just did a video about Turkey. 
the video wasn't about Turkey. It was obviously of a different topic, but I spoke about what was going on over there and um, they're experiencing inflation at 83%. Okay, so like I've said, and I'll say this again, anything that happens that has an effect on a larger scale, it doesn't happen by random. There's powerful people that, is, that are doing all of this stuff, that, that are staging this all of this stuff right here. And this is why they're not going to be truthful on the um, on what's going on with the finances. Okay. And as we all know, what causes inflation in the first place, it was all due to them printing loads of money stemming from the 08 crises, as well as and onwards quantitative easing to infinity. This is why um the prices of goods have skyrocketed, especially down here in, in um especially down in Babylon and um even down here in the UK. The Bank of England has been involved in quantitative easing as well through some time. And that's why even down here in, and down here in um the UK, especially down here in London. And just a similar way of breaking down what inflation is, inflation just simply means that you print more money when the um when the banks print money consistently what happens is the money loses its valuability and when the when the money loses its valuability the prices of goods that you buy that you need goes up in price okay so that's the core reason and that's the why you have inflation which inflation just means um heightened prices above normal and it's really to do with the money because the money that we hold in our hands or the physical money that we used to hold in our hands because we're no longer doing that anymore but rather swiping with our cards has no true valuability to it so because of that the bankers are able to manipulate the value of the currency that you hold in your hand by printing more and more of it which devalues the the, the, the currency therefore at least too high prices in goods Elliot largely blamed central banks for the worsening financial picture and added that most have been dishonest towards the true culprit of record high inflation and instead attributed prices pressures to supply chain disruptions as opposed to loose monetary policy. And um, something that just came to my mind, man, I mean, you got these entertainers among our people that brag about how much money they got in the bank and, and, and you know, how they're, um, they're showing off the money that they got in their, uh, you know, their car, you know, their car boot or, you know, however they show off their money. And what they don't understand is, is that the average person anyway, they don't understand how money works, but the money that people are showing off that, that, that they, that they swear they're getting isn't money at all because money, true money is basically gold and silver. Any form of valuable good, whether it's gold, whether it's silver, whether it's platinum or whether it's um, bronze, these keep its value. But the money that we have in our hand is paper or it's plastic. Down here in the UK, we're, um, we're using plastic um, fiat currency, which plastic doesn't have no valuability. It's not, it's not a necessity. So therefore, there's no valuability to it. But we believe it's valuability because they say so. And this is where you get the term credit from, which the term credit means belief. So if you believe you have a 20 pound note or 30 or let's just say a $40 note. If you believe it's $40, then it's $40 because it's nothing. It's, it's only value when you place your belief on it. So it's not it's not a true valuable good at all. Anyway, I'm um, enough for that. So it says the looming bout of hyperinflation could lead to a global societal collapse and civil and international strife. Uh, the letter said Elliot also added that markets still have room to sink lower and find a bottom while frightening and seriously negative possibilities remain on the horizon. OK, so there you go with that. But what I, what I also want to speak about briefly is the fact that he he said that um let me read this again actually what he what he said hyperinflation could spur the most significant financial crises since world war ii because during world war ii you had two countries that suffered hyperinflation 
at that time. And it was um, China and as well as another place, Hungary as well. And um, the currency went to shit in China and prices rose up by a thousand fold at the time. And as well as it happened in um, in, in um, Hungary. And what happened in Hungary was quite similar to what happened during the time of the 20s of, of the Weimar Republic in Germany, where <laughs> the currency went down to nothing and the prices of goods just went up to infinity. So what he's basically saying is, is we're going to suffer exactly what the Hungarians and what the Chinese have suffered back in these times as he see it coming. Okay. So we're coming into some difficult Difficult times man And it's not going to be that difficult for the elect But it's going to be very difficult for the world To be exact At Isaiah 19 and verse 14 The Lord have mingled the perverse spirit In the midst thereof And they have caused Egypt to err In every work thereof And as a drunken man staggered in his vomit This is the point Neither shall there be any work for Egypt Which the head or tail branches rush May do so jobs that are important to, to the least kind of jobs, there'll be no work. There'll be no business because if you can't sell your products due to hyperinflationary prices, then your business goes out. There's no business at all. Okay. And when there's no business being done in society, then there's no society. There's no empire. So this is another way. Or well, one way that the Lord is going to bring an end to the system. And cutting off energy supply is definitely going to bring that. And this is all planned out, man. This is all being planned out. This has already been planned out, excuse me. And now they're going to put their plans into activation. And it is really all through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai to bring in the end of this world so that we can transition to the new world and that's what it's all about and that's why i keep saying this because this is where we're heading now ezekiel the seventh chapter and uh verse five we'll begin right there thus saith the lord yahweh power in evil and only in evil behold is come and an end is come and the end is come it watcheth for thee and behold it is come and Ezekiel was posing this to Israel. All of these words that you read here was posed towards our people at the time because our people were wicked. But this could be used against Edom, modern day Edom. That's controlling everything in the works today. And they call themselves after us, them small hatters, which really they control the world. And, and just to be more specific, the German small hatters. They're the ones that's controlling everything and as well as what they also are, are cryptic JOOSs. So this is posed to them now that their end is about to be. Uh, verse 7, excuse me, verse 6, and the end is come, the end is come, and they watch it for thee, and behold it is come. Verse 7, the morning is come unto thee, and O thou that dwellest in the land, and the time is come. And the day of trouble is near and not the sounding again of the mountains. And what the Lord is doing is the Lord is using them to sanction their own downfall. Because what they want is they want a greater society, which includes them having great power and great rule over the minds of many. More effectively. So let's bring down the old world so that we can reform. A world where we have full control of, of everybody's lives and we can measure every single thing about a person to their heart rate. To how much blood that's pumping through their veins. How much sleep can they get? This is why they keep talking about climate change this and climate change that. So they can formulate a world like that where they have every single thing in data all right but in trying to get this world going they're going to bring an end to the world of the heavenly fathers blessed them with 
and set up the kingdom of heaven. And this is what's in the workings today as I speak. So with that, I close and I, and I say Shalom.